Hi, David Taub here. Welcome. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about this item. What this is, is a capo. And it's a really, really good tool that you're going to want to use in your guitar journey. And it's a lot of fun and it's going to open up a whole new palette of sounds and allow you to play things that you probably haven't been able to play up to this point in your guitar journey. Now, capo is short, is Italian for capo stada, and it means, uh, translation kind of translates to primary fret. So what this device does is it changes the primary fret or changes where the nut goes in order to give you different sounds and different keys. And it's a really great device. Here's a close-up of this one. This is made by a company called Kaiser. And um, you don't need to go out and buy like a $40, $50 capo. This capo, something like this, 12 bucks, 15 bucks. that's fine. Get the metal one, though. This is metal with the spring. I really like these capos. Don't get the ones that you tie on because they're a pain in the neck to keep tying on and off. And don't get the ones with the teeth that you squeeze because the teeth break over time. Because this is going to be pushing down on all the strings so there's some, it's got to be some tension there and you really work this. So you want a, a good quality piece but you know, these for 15 bucks are fine. They do a great job, okay? What this does is it it changes where that nut is where you, the nut is on the guitar so it allows you to play things like uh, bar chords but play them with open chord fingerings and get that kind of more open chord sound. So the capo sounds especially great with acoustic guitar. You could use it on acoustic or electric. Sounds good with acoustic because on acoustic a lot of times you want that open chord, open string ringiness kind of sound, not maybe necessarily that bar chord sound. And the capo allows you to play a lot of bar chords with open chord fingerings and they have those sounds and I'm going to demonstrate that to you. It opens up this whole new palette of sounds to, uh, for you on the guitar. It also, the capo allows you to transpose music into different keys and that's very important for instance um, if you like to sing and play or if you're playing with a singer because you can transpose a song into a key that's a better key for the singer's voice. Okay, your voice, everyone has a certain vocal range and you're stronger in some keys than you are in others and the capo allows you to kind of um, tailor the key of the song to your, your, your vocal um, range. So it's, it's really good for that too. I really like it because it really gives that open chord ringiness to, um, um, to chords and it makes playing bar chords easier. And I know at this point in your guitar journey, we haven't talked about bar chords yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there soon. Okay. So, um, um, it, it, it makes things a lot easier at this point in your guitar journey. So go out and get one. Okay. And then come back here and turn this lesson back on. All right. Cause you probably don't have one right now. If you do great, play along with me. All right. So, uh, what this does, for instance, like, let's say you, there's a certain song, you want to play at this at this point in your guitar journey and it has a B flat chord in it a B flat major chord we haven't gone over B flat major chords yet because for the most part you're going to need to play a bar chord B flat major you'd have to play it like this and right now your hand isn't strong enough and we haven't gotten to that point where you're playing bar chords yet right so you can't play this chord but you need it for this song well you can move the song and use the capo for instance so now Check this out. Listen to how this sounds. Here's your B flat major chord. Okay? If I fix the capo to the third fret, all right? And now I finger a G chord, just an open four finger G chord. Listen. That is now ringing to the pitch of B flat. See, I'll take that off. See? But notice the sound of the bar chord. It's kind of more muted. You don't really hear open strings. Now, listen to the sound with the capo. It sounds a lot prettier. It has that open chord. Right? So, um, what this does is now, it's actually making the third fret like the nut. And it's basically chopping off this much of the guitar. So, you play the fingering for the G and I say fingering and this is pretty much standard when you see songs written out it'll say capo third fret G chord that's not ringing to the pitch of G it's ringing to a B flat but you're fingering the G okay 
And a lot of times, remember we talked, it's so important to develop your ear, good people. I can't say that enough. And we have lots of lessons coming up on ear training and development. And we we're kind of planting seeds all along your guitar journey. But a lot of times I could tell immediately when they're using a capo on a song because I can hear that kind of higher, kind of open kind of pitch that you don't get without it. So listen for that in certain songs and you'll hear it as your ear develops more and more, right? So let's say there's a song that goes from a B flat major or a part of a song to an F to a C, right? B flat, F to a C. Okay? And you want to be able to play that, but you can't because you don't play that F bar chord yet or that B flat bar chord. Well, if I put my capo at the third fret, play the fingering for G, that is ringing out to that B flat. Now I play the fingering for a D chord, and that's ringing out to the pitch of F. D, uh, uh, fingering, listen. See? Same pitch. Same, um, um, same F. And then at the third fret, if I finger an A chord, it rings out to C. So now you can play that progression. Just play G fingering, D fingering, and A fingering with the capo at the third fret. And by the way, when you're capoing it up, when you're attaching the capo like at the third fret, don't put it right behind the fret because you, you won't be able, I can't get my hand in here to play that A chord. Put it like in the middle of the frets or a little bit toward the back, okay, because you're going to have to get your hand in there. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about when you try it. But don't put it right behind. Put it like in the middle. So the capo's at the third fret and play the fingering for G. There's my chord that rings out to B flat. Fingering for D. That rings out to the F. And fingering for A. Okay? And check it out. A gift from the gods, huh? See, because listen here. Bar chords. With my B flat. F to the C. Same kind of thing, but this has a little different timber and it sounds a little bit nicer because again you're getting on the especially on the acoustic that open string kind of ringiness, right? So practice that. Downstrokes. Okay, so um, um, you're probably saying to yourself, self, well, how do I know what chord rings to what when I move the capo to a certain fret if I'm trying to find how to do this for myself? We have the answers for you because in the written lesson section of the site, I uh, have a capo chart which basically transposes all that for you. So go to the written lesson sections and download this chart on capo. And you see it has like a little matrix here where you have the chord shape on one side and then the fret number along the top. So if you play a chord shape for let's say a G on the, and you capo up the second fret, it's actually ringing to the pitch of A. Okay? Or like we just did. We played the um, G shape at the fourth fret and it rang out to the pitch of B, right? Um, um, or B flat at the third fret. We did it at the third fret, B flat. All right, so this is a very important piece and eventually you'll get them all memorized, but download this and print it out and have that next to you. Put it in your practice um, log, all right? And this will really help you transpose uh, chords and key and whatnot. So let's do another example. This time, let's say there's a song or something you wanna play and it has an E flat major chord in it, which you'd have to play bar chord up here at the sixth fret on the fifth string root. And let's say the song went B flat, E 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 flat, E
flat to F. All right, and like we said before, you're, you're not ready or you're not playing bar chords just yet. Use your capo. When you're putting the capo on, make sure it doesn't bend the strings up or down because then it's going to sound out of pitch. So you just want the capo to go right on the strings uh, flat. You don't want the string to do this, to bend. You want to have it just go straight down. Okay, so the progression we want to play B flat, E flat to F. Let's capo up at the first fret. All right, and have that capo, when you put that on, make sure it doesn't bend the string sideways. You want the capo to go push the string straight down. If it bends the strings, they're gonna ring out a little out of tune and you don't want that. So we need a B flat chord. If I put the capo at the first fret and play an A fingering, see it rings out the B flat, right? There's that B flat chord, right? All right, and you could play an A, open A chord, so. A first fret rings to B flat, then play the D fingering, first fret that rings out to E flat, and then the E fingering will ring out to an F. And there's our progression. A fingering, now capos at the first fret, A fingering, D fingering, now E fingering. Okay, beautiful. See this capo? It's just a, it's a beautiful device. Now you could do those same things and embellish your chords, right? So if I'm playing with the capo of the first fret, I'm playing that A fingering, I could use that suspended chord. See? It's ringing the B flat, which is B flat suspended second now. And then here's the fourth, suspended fourth. Now you could do the same thing on the D finger. Remember the sus2? But that D chords ring out to the pitch of E flat, so it would technically be an E flat sus2, but I'm fingering the D. There's a sus4. So you can mess around with that. Sus two and four. Back to the A fingering. E fingering. G fingering. A fingering. E. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. That's more of like a one, four, five. But do all the same things that we were doing before with suspensions. You could do chucking too. same rhythmic embellishments that we've been working on with suspended chords and chucking you can do while you um, have the capo on. Same thing, you're just transposing the chords, right? And mess around with it. Put the capo at the fourth fret, okay? And uh, uh, play a D chord. That actually rings to F sharp. Here's your F sharp bar chord, right? Capo fourth fret, D. Fingering rings to F sharp, and maybe I want to go to like a, a G sharp, which the fingering would be E, E fingering. So just take that D fingering to the E fingering with the capo on the fourth fret, and let's do it again. This time I'll throw in some other stuff, maybe some arpeggiating. 
you know, on on uh, with a suspended chord and on the E. All right, and just go back and forth and practice adding those embellishments, making it interesting. strumming. See, I'm creating that melody. Maybe chucking. See, good people, you could do so much with just a couple of chords and now you're really as you're working through your guitar journey you're adding all these things to the things that you can embellish with you are learning multiple strums you're learning how to chuck with open chords you're learning suspended chords and add chords soon if you haven't learned yet you'll be learning um, how to arpeggiate how to break up the strum how to add in these different rhythmic elements that add melody and you could whip them out at any time you want your artistic discretion, you can add them in there. And you could do this with songs you already know, maybe um, throw these things in there. Um, but I want you to get the capo and start practicing with that and see the next lesson after this one. And I'm going to have some song suggestions that use the capo. Okay. And you're going to really want to get to know this device because it's really going to help you in your guitar journey. It's fun. It's easy. And you can really transpose your mu music and give yourself a whole new palette of sounds with it. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you're playing electric or acoustic. It sounds really, really nice on acoustic because it gives it that real acoustic -y feel, but you can do the same thing on electric okay all right so um, keep on rocking keep developing your ear we have more lessons on ear training coming up um, keep practicing the right things Rome wasn't built in a day so keep chipping away at these things every day and you'll see your playing you as you traverse that staircase just getting better and better and better okay we're here to help let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next lesson take care